you. Thank you. How you doing? Good. How are you, young man? <laughs> surprised and overwhelmed, totally overwhelmed, and very happy. Thank you to my sister, my favorite sister. Oh, there is a lot behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. This is awesome. Okay. All right, I think we're going to get started. Who is ready to roast and toast Mr. Dean Peterson? Okay, while those are still finding seats in the back, I think we'll get started. Well, welcome and thank you for coming to celebrate the one and only Mr. Dean Peterson. So many have come together to make this night so special. We're going to have a wonderful lineup of 
friends and family who have prepared to roast and toast our guest of honor. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming our guest of honor to the stage. That's you, Dean. We have symbolically put him in the red hot seat for the night. Maybe you should be. First, introduce myself. I'm his favorite nephew's wife, we'll say, Darcy. So I'm going to be your MC for the night. And his first up on the roast list is his favorite sister, Rose Haug. All right. Well, I know Darcy said thank you to everyone, but I want to also say thank you for coming to celebrate with our brother, his dedication to his teaching career, his students, the community, and friends is simply outstanding, and we could not be prouder of you. And his love for his family is the same. He's been there for every single one of us, and mom and dad would be absolutely as proud as could be right now. And then a special thank you to the Lee Deadwood school staff and faculty. I made one phone call, and this just mushroomed. <laughs> I mean, with, without Lori, Kim, Barb, Kinnett, Eva, all of you. Absolutely. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's just been wonderful. I cannot thank you enough. And then for Sarah and the Opera House to let us host the event here. Perfect. Just perfect. I just have to say, you are the best in the West. <laughs> and now, with the help of my lovely assistants, I have to give out a few family awards. <laughs> They're not going to be the nicest, but you know, I, <laughs> it is a roast, right? <laughs> OK. Um, for years, Dean always tried to get mom to call him the favorite son. Well. No, our mother was just not going to do that. <laughs> she, she would say, I have three favorite sons. Well, anyway, he still continued. Well, one day he made a phone call to mom. And he said, hello, mom. This is your favorite son. And she replied, well, hello, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> After that, he just took his rank as number three. <laughs> so we have a little gift that you can wear and prove that you are the number three. <laughs> and then I know how much he likes pictures, so I have a special picture frame, and Ivy has that, with mom and her three sons, Aww. depicting each number. <laughs> and Delbert has the fingers up like this, but I think he was doing rabbit ears on Dean. <laughs> but I just have to say that Daddy's little girl trumps mom and three sons any day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, and they, they do kind of say that Dean and I are a lot alike, and we do look alike, I realize that, but we both have our Norwegian moments. And now we have a special shirt for that. It says, it's Norway, it's in my DNA. <laughs> and now I realize you're going to have a special time on your hands, so in case you want to come east and help, you know, we have Kurt the rancher, okay. so we have clothes for you for that, because you probably don't have more than just teaching clothes, right? I don't. Okay, so we have a special hat and some special boots. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just a second. Yeah, and the boots are not the nicest boots, but if you're going to be working for Kurt, you're going to be doing some barn duty. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, and then, of course, Dalbert, who was very, very sorry that he could not make it. Sometimes the dates just don't work. But he did send his aid team, Amanda, his daughter, and Andy, her husband. <laughs> and the children are here, too. So there you go. He's got, he's got good representation. But Dalbert is our farmer, and he, uh, he likes his green John Deere's. So I'm sure you don't have a John Deere hat and a John Deere shirt. Now you do. <laughs> Go ahead. I am a John Deere driver. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then of course Larry and I are in the construction business, so we had to pull out a little bit of specialty there. <laughs> and Larry figures after 40 years plus of teaching, he has really nailed it. So Larry made you a special hammer. <laughs> It's gold-plated. <laughs> and of course, you have to wear a Haug steel hat when you're using that hammer. That's a real hammer. <laughs> there you go. And then, of course, I have to give mine. <laughs> and I have Kip on retainer, and I have uh, formed a neighborhood watch group on Summit Street. So there is no more Christmas tree heist going to happen. <laughs> but I have a get out of jail free card for you. <laughs> so just in case he has a slip up. I got it, Kip. <laughs> and then we want you to enjoy and relax and let your hair down. Have fun. <laughs> oh, that's right. You need a little help with that. <laughs> there you go yeah but seriously we w I get you the special gift Paisley yeah for all the years you have been teaching I have this wonderful commemorative watch for you the key is, though, the watch doesn't work. <laughs> but you won't be either. <laughs> so anyway, there you have it. Darcy, you're up. Please sit, yes. <clears throat> okay, up next, um, we have Barb. Dean and Barb go way back, I mean way back. Both are Eastern South Dakota transports who found their way to the hills. They have been friends for 34 years and share many common denominators, including musical directoral responsibilities, a Norwegian sense of humor, and shared keys and codes needed to allow each other's dogs to be able to take care of business when school responsibilities keep the master occupied for extended time periods. So please welcome Barb with her poem for Dean upon his retirement. I have to say, though, that that golden hammer looks a lot more useful than the apple. <laughs> yeah. Ordeen, upon his retirement. As you look into your rearview mirror of teaching, see the goals you were constantly reaching. Work has been one long daily routine, but the time has come for you to change your scene. Your empty thermos at the end of your day, replaced by a constant coffee break. Hooray. <laughs> who could have known that the tyke who could barely pass choir would achieve such notoriety as he pre prepared to retire? Your journey has lasted, oh, so many years. Decades have passed in your teaching careers. Not just one level or even one school winner, 
Lead Deadwood K-12 were your tools. So many students you have indeed inspired, many skills they have all acquired. Although the yearbooks have shown your changing face, you have continued your program with a breakneck pace. We've all learned much from your class act. Encouragement, high standards, values, and tact. With hard work and patience, you did succeed. Now we are sad that you have chosen to leave. You have done a rather top-notch job. Indeed, we will miss you. We may even sob. We wish you the best as you depart. Many good memories we hold in our heart. Many adventures await you anew. Please be advised. Enjoy the new view. Although Norwegian your fam is your family cresting, I would like to close with an Irish retirement blessing. May you always have work for your hands to do. May your pockets hold always a coin or two. May the sun shine bright on your window pane, and may the rainbow be certain to follow each rain. May the hand of a friend always be near you, up the street, and may God fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. You're about to board a really long flight, so put your seatbelt on, clutch the armrest tight. The flight will take you to a beautiful destination. It's called retirement, life's longest vacation. Congratulations on your retirement, Dean. Thank you for that, Barb. Up next, we have a special, special musical treat prepared by Kim Hansen with her Dean tribute. Please welcome her to the stage. Love, love and
Test. Can you hear? Good. Now you got me. <laughs> Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Dean uh, has been my mentor. He's been my friend, advisor for many years. I was a guidance counselor at the high school for many years. And uh, I quit when Dean told me that I needed more guidance than the students. <laughs> so thank you, Dean. That was good. Um, I uh, talked to my friend Elton John the other day, and he said, you know, Dean likes Elton John. You should maybe sing or try to sing a Elton John song. So, so I'm going to do that. And life is kind of full of ironies. Like the gal that sang before, a tremendous musician. Dean is an outstanding musician. Give him a hand. He's very well trained, very uh, accomplished. So, respected teacher. And the irony is that I am singing for him as an untrained, self-taught, awkward musician. So, that can't read without his glasses. It's a little bit funny Me, Mr. Peterson, leaving the school Because I've been here for many decades of rule I don't have much hair I don't care Now that I'm leaving so back, I swear. If I were the superintendent, I'd have everyone sing. Oh, at staff meetings, the harmony I'd bring. I know it's just music, it's what I do. My gift is my song, and this one's for me. And you can tell everyone, 40 years ago, I was just a blue-eyed boy in a leisure suit. Hope you don't mind, hope you don't mind. I put down words, how wonderful life is when retirement comes. I sat at the piano and kicked off the moss. Well, a few of those kids, they got me quite cross. But the classroom's been kind While I wrote this song It's for all the students I helped along So excuse me for getting These things I do You see I've forgotten Whether the day is Gold or maroon. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, what I really mean 
These hallways are the sweetest thing I've ever seen. You can tell everybody I'm leaving this school. It might be quite hard, but I know that it's cool. Hope you don't mind, hope you don't mind. I put down the wind. How wonderful life is when the retirement comes. Hope you don't mind, hope you don't mind. I put down the wind. How wonderful life is when retirement comes. How wonderful life is when retirement comes. Excuse me for being about a half a step high. Um, I've, unlike most of you, I've only known Dean for a few years. We sing together for Dr. John Nero at Black Hill State University. And a couple of years ago, it was during the summer, um, John was called away home for a family event, <laughs> emergency. And he was stuck away for quite a while. And I got it in my head that we needed to mow his lawn so that everyone wouldn't know he was gone or whatever reason we decided. So I thought, who, I didn't have a lawn mower, so I thought, who could I call that is friends with John, that could help me, like, keep up his house while he's gone? And I thought, this Dean guy, I didn't really even know him at the time. I don't even know how I got his number. You know, maybe he still has a landline. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I called up Dean, and I said, hey, would you be willing to come down to Spearfish and help me tidy John's lawn? And uh, make it look like he's not gone for an extended period of time. And he said, I don't remember what he said, sure, we met over there. And I thought, I don't know, I don't really know this Dean guy, but we'll see. So he pulls up, and I forget what car you're driving. But it was like a car. And I was like, okay, he was supposed to bring the mower. And so um, he gets out of his car in fancy shoes, <laughs> designer jeans, and like some kind of cool t-shirt that probably costs more than anything I own. And, uh, and I was like, um, hi, Dean, where's the mower? And he opened his trunk, and he pulled out this mower in this fancy outfit that he had. And I was in a work outfit with heels and stuff, and I thought, I should be mowing, because he looked too nice. And, but he, so he proceeded to mow the lawn with these really fancy, probably those shoes, fancy shoes and a fancy T-shirt. And so um, it was a really funny thing for me. I was weeding in my skirt and high heels while he was mowing in his fancy outfit, and we were quite a pair. And since then, um, I've just, it's been a real pleasure to get to know Dean, and I'm thrilled that I get to know him now that he's being retired, because that means we get to hang out a lot more than otherwise. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, up next we have, also from Black Hill State, Nancy Roberts and John Nero would like to share a song with you. Please welcome them to the stage. Before Nancy and Colleen come up, there's a song that I thought was appropriate that I'd like to oh, no. sing for you. So. <laughs> I am really nervous now. No, well, um, Forgive the piano playing.
Maybe if we could have everybody that performed with Dean come back up on stage so you can get one last picture with all of these wonderful people and give them one more round of applause. Everybody that was up here tonight, please come back up.
was amazing. Thank you. Let's give them one more round of applause. It's been a wonderful night, but I wouldn't um, be able to finish it without this very special proclamation that I got from the governor of the state of South Dakota. I have an executive proclamation, and I'll read it to you. The state of South Dakota, Office of the Governor, whereas Dean E. Peterson graduated from Astoria High School in 1970, and went on to receive his bachelor's degree in music education from Northern State College in 1974. <laughs> Whereas, in 1975, Dean began his education career in Winter Middle School in Winter, South Dakota, and in 1976, he moved here to Lee, South Dakota, to continue his teaching, degree, teaching career at the Lee Deadwood School District, where he taught for 40 years. Whereas Dean has touched the lives of over 3,900 students over his tenure through his dedication to teaching K-5 through music, middle school chorus, high school choir, encouraging and leading several hundred students through the South Dakota Honors Choir program. Whereas Dean was honored by the South Dakota chapter of the American Choral Directors Association with a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014, an award given to recognize the choral director working in South Dakota who has made a significant impact on the lives of students in the pursuit of excellence in the field of choral music in South Dakota over the course of their teaching career. Whereas, <coughs> Dean was awarded the 2017 Lee Deadwood School District Teacher of the Year Whereas on May 19th, 2017, I can't look at him. <laughs> After 40 years of teaching, together with his family, hundreds of his friends, and students he has had the pleasure of working with, we celebrate his retirement from the Lee Deadwood School District. And whereas it is fitting and proper as governor to make special note of this outstanding South Dakota. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Dugard, Governor of the State of South Dakota, do hereby proclaim May 19th, 2017 as Dean Peterson Day. spend it with you guys. I thank my sister Rose and all of her um, support team, <coughs> which shall remain nameless yet. <laughs> um, I love you guys. I have loved this. It's been a great run in Lee Deadwood. I couldn't have been happier. It's a great place to be, and I thank you. You're all dear friends. Thank you so much. I love you all.